Hello. My name is Mike Pfaff, and this is my YouTube channel, Living in the Illusion. Now, this video is going to be about cause and effect. Cause and effect in relationship to mental health. So we need a model of a mental disorder. Uh, I have my very heavy book entitled Diagnosis and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. And so as a model, to understand this process a little bit, we're going to pick depression. Now, there are many, many different diagnoses, uh, but we picked that one because it's kind of common to a lot of people. I could have picked anxiety, which is another one that is common to a lot of people. But we'll pick, uh, basically, not the most strenuous uh, depression, but what's called dysthymia or persistent depressive disorder. Now, in all of these, uh, they give symptoms or effects of the disorder. And from the Symptoms and effects is given a diagnosis. So for dysthymia uh, or persistent uh, depressive disorder, there are six criteria, and basically six criteria. And if you have at least two, you can receive the diagnosis of dysthymia. So here they are. There's only six of them. Uh, poor appetite or overeating, insomnia uh, or hyperinsomnia. You're either asleep or you can't sleep. Uh, low energy or fatigue low self-esteem that has to do with your interpretation of yourself poor concentration and feelings of hopelessness helplessness now if you have any two of these six you could be diagnosed with uh, dysthymia. So, very important book. But now we're going to talk about it in relationship to cause and effect. Now, in the past, we've done some initial work on both uh, depression and cause and effect. And I will put those uh, references uh, up above. I think they'll end up over on that side, if we're lucky. So now, in a moment, uh, again, I'm going to change the area, and uh, we'll begin an in-depth study of cause and effect and mental health and use depression as our touchstone. So look forward to seeing you again in just a moment. Well, uh, we're back, and again, I have stated up here uh, 
our discussion. Cause, effect, and mental health. So cause, effect, and mental health. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And we're going to use depression. Now these are effects or symptoms of what we defined as a depression. Uh, again, sleep issues, low self-esteem, low energy, can't do a lot, uh, concentration, your mind wanders around other things, and uh, bad feelings. Bad feelings usually relate to your know, suicidal thoughts, uh, you're not good enough, uh, you'd be better off, everybody would be better off if you were someplace else, uh, that kind of stuff. And eating issues, where eating is used as a distraction. So, we have the effects, and we have the mental illness of depression. <clears throat> What's missing? Well, before we get to that, all of these, or most of them, can be moderated without too much trouble. Uh, what would that be? I oops, something. What would that be? Well, these can be moderated by such things as exercise, what you call moving your buns, because when you move your body, you begin to change the chemistry in the body, and these will moderate. Uh, also, uh, a lot of information around mindfulness, meditation, relaxation, uh, uh, visualization and other other processes like that will moderate them. Well, the problem is you have no energy. You have no energy to do that. So you say, okay, let's go out and walk. Nah, I don't want to walk. Why? Well, I feel depressed. Ooh. So you feel depressed, so you can't do stuff to help you not feel depressed is basically what happens. So we have symptoms. Now other ways of moderating the symptoms is that you go to a healthcare professional who prescribes medication and you get an, if you got depression, you get an antidepressant substance which will also moderate these. And when you're not moderated, I mean, when you do moderate these, for instance, uh, your energy. If you take some medication that you uh, reduce your uh, low energy and increase your energy, you're more likely to go for a walk or do exercise like yoga uh, or tai chi or some other exercise like that, which will again support moderation of these symptoms. Does that make sense so far? I hope so. Now, for every effect, for every effect, there is a cause. See, in everything that we talked about so far, we haven't talked about the cause. So usually, a lot of times, I, uh, I suggest, I say, let me give you, I'll pretend like I have some symptoms, and you tell me what the problem is. So I say, suppose, now outside of COVID, 
or what we're talking about right now, I tell you, uh, well, uh, I have a sore throat. <coughs> oh, yes. And uh, my nose is running. And my eyes are a little itchy. And uh, I got a little fever. And I'd say, well, watch your problem. And you might say, well, it sounds like you have a cold, you have an allergy, you have the flu. Uh, so the symptoms kind of overlap, all of those kind of things. So let's say you say, well, it sounds like you have a cold. So I'm going to put cold up here. Okay. Now, I, uh, so now I gave you a bunch of symptoms and you analyze those like you had a big book and it says, well, those symptoms fall into having a cold, runny nose and sore throat and that kind of stuff, sneezing. Okay. So you got a cold. Now, the same thing here. You have those symptoms over here, and you say, well, you've got depression. Okay. What's the problem? Well, I told you, I've got depression. You're, aren't you listening? i got depression, and I have these symptoms. Now, I want you to kind of get the idea that the name, the short, the shortened version of the name of a group of symptoms is not the cause. The name depression, which means sleep problems, low self-esteem, low energy, can't concentrate, you're feeling bad about yourself and you're eating a lot, not the problem. That's not what's causing the depression. I'm asking, what is your problem? In other words, I'm asking for the cause, not the results. What's the cause that is giving you these results that we are naming depression. The same with this. I gave you a list of symptoms and you put the name on the symptoms, which is cold. What's the problem? Because there is a problem and it's called the cause. So you have a problem over here. There's a problem when you're having the symptoms. Now, if you have a cold, you say, well, I got a problem, I got a cold. And I say, what's your problem? You might say, well, you have a virus infection, a infection in your nose, rhino infection because of virus. So there is a problem that's causing the cold symptoms. There is a problem that's causing the depression symptoms. Now, like a cold, you can moderate the symptoms. You can go to bed. You can take a, a, a warm shower. You can take aspirin, you can take uh, stuff for your throat, you can take uh, antihistamines for... Now, you can moderate the symptoms with all kinds of things. Won't solve the problem. Now, if you have a cold, which means you have a virus, 
you have the virus and just like we found out with all viruses you can have the virus for some period of time and not have any symptoms with a cold usually the body has the virus for three to five days before symptoms symptoms express themselves four or five days now with a cold the body's immune system begins to energize you sleep more and you allow the body to recuperate and the immune system after about 14 days overcomes the virus virus is gone what happens to the symptoms of the cold they're gone they disappear they are no more and the immune system runs around shaking hands with themselves saying hey we had a great fight and we took care of those guys and so we don't have any symptoms so now we have these symptoms over here mental health symptoms we have a name for it we call it depression what's the problem what's the problem of the depression now we can moderate them we talked about ways of moderating them if you stop the mod moderations you stop the antidepressants you stop uh, exercising uh, you do stuff like that more likely the symptoms will return why you didn't solve the problem you didn't solve the problem you moderated the symptoms you didn't cause the problem now what are traditionally some of the things now recognize there's a time frame time from the problem to the symptoms how long is that time frame that was something like a cold we know it's three to five days with depression before you see the symptoms could be years and years so there's a time frame between when the problem occurs and when the symptoms arrive that you are consciously aware of so what would some of those problems be that would cause depression well a lot of studies on this but somehow we forget the studies and we fall back on well let's just moderate the symptoms and if the symptoms drop below the magic number in this case two you don't have depression if you don't have depression stop taking the medication or the 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 uh, exercise treatment did you solve the problem did you solve the cause the cause because you have a causal problem 
Well, no, we took the medication, we took the exercise, we did what we could, we feel better, uh, we're sleeping better, and therefore, well, you don't have depression anymore. People get on and I take, take certain medications, certain exercises, certain things, 5, 10, 20, your whole life. And it, it, it works to a great extent, except it don't solve the problem. So it's affecting their life in negative ways. Now, part of the concern is we don't know how to solve it. First of all, we can't find it, or we won't admit it where the problem lies, and we don't know how to change it. We don't know how to heal it. Because mental health, therapy, seeing a therapist is all about healing the mind. Healing the mind. Well, unusual problem. Nobody knows what the mind is. We got a lot of ideas, but we don't know what the mind is. So we have a causal problem, and it's causing us effects, symptoms. Most studies, a lot of studies, not all, but a lot, childhood. Childhood abuses, neglect of all kinds. Stimulations of all kinds that the child don't know how to handle. How long before the symptoms show up? Don't know. If you've got symptoms today, the cause must be before today. Now, if you've had the symptoms and in therapy, yes, person, uh, well, how long have you had these symptoms? Standard answer, or one that comes up a lot? I've always had them. I don't remember when I didn't have them. Well, then you go investigate. The therapist investigates. He says, well, did you have them in high school? Oh, yeah, I had them in high school. Oh, well, what about grade school? Oh, yeah, I had a lot of trouble in grade school. I was always depressed. I, uh, my teacher always recognized it, and I always had it set close to them, and uh, whatever you did. Or I had to see the, the uh, school uh, social worker or all kinds of stuff like that. Okay, so you had them in, in grade school. When did the problem start that gave you the symptoms before grade school. Before grade school. What's before grade school? Family of origin. Where's your problem at? your cause of the symptoms you're having today. Now, this is a rocky road for a therapist to grow down, to find the cause, and then to know how to change the cause. Then you know how to change the cause. It's much easier to take medication for 25 years than it is to, well, because what do you have to do? You have to question all of that loving family arrangement and everything like that. And we don't want to do that because that's very painful and it will increase 
the degree of the symptoms in some cases. So, I want to encourage you to have you recognize Therapy is around healing the past. Problems do not come up in the present moment. Now, I have another video that says you're never upset for the reason you think. You don't have these symptoms for the reason you think. Now, if you have the symptoms now, the reason you think is because of something that you see that isn't here now in the present moment. Now, what could that be? memories from the past that you bring with you into the present moment. Now there's another series, uh, and I'll put a reference to it up there. You are never upset for the reason you think you don't have these symptoms. These are not caused by the current reason you think. So if you want to heal the mental health issue, the depression, the anxiety, the PTSD, or whatever it is. You have to heal the past. The past, the past, the past determines your present condition and why you can moderate it. You won't heal it. If you want to live a life without symptoms that you have here, you have to heal the past, which is a much different process than relying on moderating the current symptoms. And so I kind of leave you with that. Uh, and, and again, I'm going to say, Mental health therapy is around not moderating, healing. It's not, mental health therapy is not around healing, uh, moderating your symptoms. It's around healing the cause. And the cause this is present moment because this is what's going on with you now. <coughs> the cause is going to be in the past. You heal the past and you change the present moment. If you don't heal the past, the present moment is the way it is. The present moment is determined by your past, not by the present. So that'll give you a lot to think about. And uh, uh, we'll get together, and maybe we'll expand on this a little bit more. It depends on uh, what kind of questions come up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe below. Uh, and hopefully, you can see your way to a brand new 
happy life without too much trouble. So until we see each other again, be gentle with yourself and recognize you can change. Bye now.